What's up, y'all? It is your girl, Sarah from Sarah Styles here, where data empowers true potential, and I show you the power of your numbers. In today's video, it is my weekly accountability call with anyone who wants to join, any reseller who would like to join. So today I have Dave and Lori, and then also Catherine. Um, and ironically, we're all from Colorado. I didn't plan this, <laughs> but we all ended up being from Colorado. Um, so that's kind of fun and exciting here as well. Um, thank you guys for joining. This is a call I do every single Monday, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard. So if you're watching and you would like to join the video, just send me a DM on Instagram and you're welcome to come on and chat. Um, I call it accountability, but it kind of is just talking about our, our business and kind of whatever comes up today. I'm really excited to have Dave and Lori here. Um, and Catherine is well, but Dave and Lori, I have met uh, personally through some eBay stuff and they have a warehouse, they have employees, they started a new business. Um, so it's really exciting to have them here. Catherine has an amazing YouTube channel as well. And you do it with your husband. Am I making that up or am I right? He's involved. Yeah, he's, he mainly just like, starts and ends the videos, but <laughs> that's about it for now. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I feel like I've seen um, some other a husband in there now and then. Um, all right. So as we wait for people to hop on, if you guys will just start with you guys, Dave and Lori, since you're at the top of my screen, um, introduce yourselves a little bit about your background, how you got into reselling, how long you've been reselling. Um, I think you're just on eBay, but if you sell in other places right. as well, just let our audience know. Yeah, we, we're only on eBay and we are subscribers to both of your channels and enjoy seeing you guys post. It's uh it's it's fun. We we do a lot. We as you mentioned, we head up the Denver meetup group, the eBay meetup group. And being around other resellers is encouraging. It could be a pretty lonely job at times. So it even though it's not a job, it sometimes you feel like you're alone out there. Mm -hmm. Uh but just to let you know that we uh, I started selling on eBay around seven years ago. We moved out here from New Jersey and I just uh, couldn't get over to the, the amount of thrift stores out here and mm -hmm. how easy it was to get inexpensive items. And a friend of mine, a good friend of mine is a, is a full-time eBay reseller. He sells more specialized higher end equipment, but he, he got me turned on to eBay and what turned out to just be a quick, you know, buy something, flip it on eBay for some, quick money and go out to a restaurant that night turned into a full-time gig for me. I, I saw the potential and what I did was just looked at the numbers. I looked at, I looked ahead. I realized uh, since the source, the inventory is out there, why don't I just go for it, get as much as I can, take it to the level where I could be doing this full-time, turn, turn from a side hustle into full-time. And it was encouraging because I learned so much along the way. I made mistakes. Yeah. You, know, you get su you get suspended on eBay for a little bit. No big deal. Don't tell anybody that. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Uh, but you learn. You learn from your mistakes, and you grow. And 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 what happened was, I started in 2013 as a side hustle. Grew it to a full time uh, income for me. And at that time, um, I still saw more potential to get more inventory, and just. At that time, Lori was interested and she came on board. And Right. Well, Dave, at that point was a one person operation. There's only so much one person can do. Right. We only have so many hours in the day. So I looked at his business and said, hmm, well, if I came on board, then we could double that. Right. Maybe we'll just do more. And so that's pretty much what happened. We were doing everything from the top to begin. We were doing sourcing, shipping, listing, everything. Uh, but we wanted to take it was it out of your house? Because you guys have a warehouse now. Was this all like out of your house? At you that point, it was not. He had built it up to the point where he had gotten himself a, very, a small, we'll call it, um, it was a glorified storage unit. Uh, it was really a storage unit, but it did have electricity and internet and uh, utilities of that, some utilities. Uh, so he's operating out of that. It was like about 600 square feet. Yeah, 600. So. And, and it took a little bit of a commitment and leap of faith to yeah. uh, purchase something like that. And uh, it was, it was costly, but we saw the potential and we said, let's not, I, we, let's not just sit on this. Let's accelerate and get to the point where our sales could sustain the operation. So Lori came on full time and and then right and but then we realized we're only two people. We have a we have a bandwidth, maximum bandwidth. So we said, well, we need to delegate some of this 
uh, to, to others. So we hired uh, two part-time gals and they shipped and listed for us. And that's how our employees started. Right now we've worked up to about five employees at the moment. And two years ago, we moved into a larger warehouse with real inter uh, real utilities and a bathroom and everything. Uh, and it's about 2000 square feet. So that's where we are now. And we pretty much maxed out of that space right at the moment. So yeah, we're going to have lots more questions, I think, from the um, audience as well, because I think there's so much. I mean, that's kind of the next level up for a lot of people. I um, mean, it's very scary um, to take. So I think you guys have a lot of um, stuff that you can share with us. Excited to have you here. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, Catherine, why don't you, Ginger, Marvin, both of their links to, um, I have their Instagram links, but they should have links to all of their other places um, on Instagram or in the description. If you want to give us a little bit of background about you, kind of how long you've been doing this, full-time, part-time, <laughs> all the things. Yeah, so um, I would say 2020 is the first year that I was kind of like full-time. Last year, Chris was... Chris is my husband. He was doing woodworking and I was doing reselling. But, you know, when we're both trying to take care of the kids and split the time of each of us working separately, it just, you know, it just wasn't working that well. So he decided to let me do my thing and he's been helping. He does almost everything with our kids and stuff that needs done around the house. And then I just mostly do all the work um, and then we didn't even plan on starting YouTube, but like just in when COVID happened, we were just like, all right, well, let's do it. We're, we're stuck at home. Might as well do it. No better so, time. Yeah. I mean, it, it's been great. But so you have little ish kids, right? I mean, I feel like they're around my four and six. So, okay. which is hard. I mean, it's a hard age, especially during COVID, if they're not able to go anywhere and they require a lot of attention. Very difficult this year so yes I feel you and it's hard so that's awesome that your husband um kind of took the back seat and is doing that so reselling if I understand is like that's your guys's full-time income or yeah right? so we are a debt-free family we don't including our mortgage like everything's paid off so it makes it pretty easy to like our bills are less than two grand a month so it's pretty easy to at least make that much money and yeah that kind of amazing can we talk about that a little bit i mean it's not reselling related but i think it's really what allows you to have that freedom reselling is so up and down we have you know two sets of full-time resellers here um to kind of talk about the different aspects of it it's very scary i'm a full-time reseller but my husband makes a full-time like income you know steady salary with benefits and stuff so it's kind of scary when it's all of your eggs in one basket um so i'd like to hear different perspectives of it how do you you're debt free is that just your long-term, um, how you guys have always been, or it's something that you've grown? How did you kind of get to that? Um, so my aunt passed oh, away five Bye. years ago. Sorry, I feel like the sound is weird. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, you're good. Okay. So my aunt passed away about five years ago. She was a single lady, no kids or anything. And so I was kind of like her daughter. Um, so I basically inherited her house and stuff and she lived in California. So we were able to sell that off. We paid off our house, our student loans, everything, cars. So, um, and at that time I was working at an eye doctor, like as a manager and I just, we had our first son who's six now, he was only like five months back then. And so I quit that job cause we had enough money to at least live for a while to figure out what we were gonna do next. And then just kind of happened upon reselling. <laughs> Honestly, I just was started to sell random garage sale things and then it just turned into more. Yeah. So when you were in California, you started reselling? No. So like, well, we've lived in Colorado for 10. Well, I've lived here since middle school. Um, oh, OK. But I had to go there, you know, do all the house, house. Stuff their house, get it cleared out, get it sold, all the estate stuff. But other than that, yeah. So oh, I, was like, I mean, it's. It's also amazing that you've able been able to stay debt free as well because it's very easy to like just go you know live beyond your means or go bigger get more debt and so being able to especially with little kids um, to be able to stay that way it's got to be very freeing um, for sure to be able to we live off of one income um, so not debt free but I think it allows us to have some of that like when I had my daughter. Um, even though we were both working, our bills were all with one income. So I could stay home with her if I wanted to. Um, and then this reselling thing too, as COVID has happened, 
the income has been nice, but it's not necessarily we have to pay our mortgage. Um, so it definitely helps, I think, with the reselling aspect. Dave and Lori, to the extent that you feel comfortable, I don't want to put you guys on the spot, but just having, I mean, now you guys are in charge of other people's incomes as well. Um, that seems, it seems amazing to have, you know, I have a VA that I pay like a contractor kind of rate, um, but like employees and stuff, if you guys want to talk a little bit about, you know, taking that leap into going full time, quitting jobs, taking on employees, um, how you kind of manage it, the ups and downs. It, it's, it was not, it, well, it, how should I say? It was, it's been a journey. Uh, and I, I say we, we started small, even though when we started, we, believe it or not, doubled. So we, and we were going to hire one person and we hired two. So we actually didn't start that small. <laughs> we, we just dove right into it. And the only, the reason why we did it was because we had faith in the, what he had already done for three years at that point, I believe, or four years at, up at that point, we felt we could replicate. And if we just, and we knew our numbers and we, and we just backed into our goals. And so we were very confident that at that point we could at least cover the commitments that we had. Um, and then it just grew from there because as your business grows, it, it needs more to support it. Right. So it's like it's a double edged sword or so. But we were we kept growing. However, I have to say we had to invest in that business. It just didn't happen organically. It could have happened, happened organically, but it would have taken a much longer time. So we had to inv inject capital money for inventory because that's in our minds. That's the, the engine of our business, our inventory. If we don't the bigger our inventory is, as long as we're getting the right stuff, of course, uh, the more successful our business would be and we would be able to proceed in our growth. So uh, I like that you say that because my la the video that I just released on Wednesday was about, you know, I went from making 2000 to 10K a month, but then I showed my net <laughs> this last video. And I sh and the reason, you know, because I'm like, people are like, how did you grow so quickly? And I'm like, well, let's look at my bottom line. I was anything I was making, I was putting back in. You can, to your point, you can grow kind of organically and slower but if you're not, if you want to go quickly and kind of make that next level, putting a lot of your money, if not all of your money, if you can afford it back into the business, um, I think is definitely kind of has to happen, especially with inventory. Luckily, the business that we're in, the inventory, you know, is on the lower end cost of things. Um, but yeah, definitely. Dave, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But yeah, have yeah no, you, and you, you said that um, we knew that uh, most people and now that looking back and we, we got to know a lot of resellers which helped launch our our new venture, eBlist. Uh, we we got to know so many resellers that plateaued at anywhere from 400 to 700 listings. Uh, let's just on one platform, uh, mainly eBay, and many of them were in the same position I was, where it's like I know I could keep on going, I just don't know how to do it. I don't want to get a place that's going to be a thousand dollars a month and then bring somebody on. It's, so all in, they would say it's, it's a bottom line. It's a net commitment of yeah. almost $3,000 a month. If you wanted a decent size, you know, uh, 800 square foot warehouse and, and build. So you, you have to take that leap of faith and you have to know your numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, you know, I always commend you. I'm like, you, yeah. you know, check out Sarah's dashboards. They're, they're a great start for, knowing your business, knowing your numbers, and then allowing them to uh, tell the story on how you can work backwards and get to where you need to go down the road. So. Yeah, totally. Um, Catherine, I'm looking at all your inventory behind you. Is this at your house? You're working out of your house. Can you talk a little bit about how you're doing it out of your house and pulling yeah. kind of your full-time income? Oh uh, yeah. So our house is not very big. Like it the total square foot is like maybe 1800 square feet. Um, so up here is just a loft, which is what you're looking at. Let me see if I can. So like, this is just, this is the whole upstairs of our house. It's just a loft and there's a little closet back there. So yeah, Chris just built these shelves last January. Um, kind of when I was growing, when we decided we were gonna do more and growing, he built these custom to our space and we, one with the banker boxes just to maximize the space. And yeah. so, how many items do you have? Because that uh, looks like a lot. Have, <laughs> clothing, clothing is probably a lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's 1,200 to 1,300 active right now. 
Yeah. Okay. So that's it. But this is, and this is why I like having different people and talking to different people. We have two full time, well, three, but two, you know, videos of full time resellers. Um, one out of their house, figured out a small space and making it work out of their house, um, you know, going debt free to be able to make this work. And then also Dave and Lori with multiple, multiple employees. I've been to their um, warehouse. Would you call it a warehouse? Is that the right? <laughs> Yeah, the office, yeah. Um, and it's, it's large. I mean, it's very, it looks like, a, you know, legit, not that we're not legit, but it looks like a business, you know, and they have processes and computers and listers and, fo you know, it's really, um, it's really amazing. But there's multiple different ways to be able to make this reselling work. And even as a side hustle too, right? You can take some of what they're saying um, and, you know, pay off some student loan debt or whatever it is. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Take it back. Um, you guys were talking about you. Went, Dave and Lori came from New Jersey, um, and we had a lot of good thrift stores here. Catherine, you grew up here. I'm always interested if people. Actually, we had a comment I wanted to say really quick. <laughs> I love watching Ginger Marvin's videos. Very helpful and great video on using Kinsey's. Um, so head on after this video. Head on over to her channel, um, and her information is down below as well. But let's talk a little bit about thrifting. Are you guys mainly or only thrifting your items? Are you making these livings off of thrifted items? Um, and then what types of things do you sell? Sure. Yeah. Every, all, we we currently have 4,000 essentially, well, essentially 4,000 thrifted items. They're one off, they're one of a kind, unique items. Uh, we don't sell multi-quantity or buy pallets or retail arbitrage. So, um, yeah, so over, over the years, I have developed a network of buyers out there in the field, mm -hmm. and most of them, most, mostly we sell personal electronics um, uh, and used. Ca used, yeah, camera equipment, et cetera. Every once in a while, they, they bring me some uh, Fendi bags, some Gucci bags, and that's when I take out my phone and text you, <laughs> Sarah, and so, what do you, do you want these or not? And um, yes, yeah. Please. Right. And so our, our niche developed over time. We didn't set out just to go into that uh, category, but it happened over time an experience where we, we could spot things that work for us. And my, my only fear is adding another item into my head, such as, uh, you know, Pocket pocketbooks or, you know, bags, and then I'll lose something else. So it's, you can't, you can't sell it all but our niche works for us and we love networking with other resellers and pointing them in an area that we know that sources are available. Yeah. And I think I've heard a lot of full-time resellers say to be able to do it, you really do have to kind of niche down because there's so much stuff out there that it's hard to become an expert in all of the different things. Then you're kind of just going multiple different places and not being great at it. Um, and so yours is more or less electronics, right? Yes. Which is a pretty big niche, yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. It's a really large niche, so it works for us. Yeah, but it's something too that I'm terrified of doing electronics. Like you see a pocket book, you're like, I don't know what to do with that, and I'm like, I don't have any. My husband though, because he's into electronics, can go to a thrift store with me and be like, that's gonna make you money. Look up the comps, and I'm like, okay, I don't even know what that is. Can you tell me what to look up? Right, right. <laughs> I mean, he's usually right because he's into electronics and like dorky, um, like action figures and stuff and he can spot ones um all right so Catherine, what do you kind of are you niche down do you specialize do you do a little bit of everything um how did you kind of get into where you're at uh, mostly clothes and shoes probably more like 95 percent clothes and shoes um i started with kids clothes just because i like kids clothes um and then two years ago i started posh i was only doing kid as in two years ago um and Mercari, I think. Um, so I started Posh, opened up to adult stuff and realized how much money there was in that. And I still do a lot of kids stuff. Um, I, I like shoes the best. If I had to pick one thing, it would be shoes, any size, men's, women's, kids, all shoes. Um, but yeah, I, I just like clothes and shoes. And I know there's a lot more money to be had in electronics or like hustling hooks, pots and pans. And uh, there's so much. You can literally sell anything. It's just nuts. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. I thought about going into, so over the summer, my brother-in-law is a reseller too. Um, and he does like one-off antiques and those like just wild stuff. Um, but he 
over 2020 was like, I don't want to do this right now, but I still like thrifting. Can I give you my stuff and we can like consign? I was like, sure. So I learned a lot from him because he would give me stuff that I would never in my right mind think to pick up um, and it would flip quick. And so I was like, oh, maybe I need to like get into electronics or hard goods. Um, and then I saw how much space they take <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like, I don't have, I mean, I'd have to cut my store in half to be able to, you know, you, I can fold up a pair of pants and fit 30 of them in a bin, um, which is really nice. Um, and so that actually kind of leads into, I want to talk a little bit um, about Dave and Lori. They, you know, they say Eblis here, reseller solutions. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what this solution is, because it's basically what, that was not a segue into it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the perfect segue because it is definitely a reseller solution, um, providing storage for people and then also essentially the shipping as well because you guys are storing their items. Um, and I think I tried thread up um, and a lot of people, the resellers and I know were doing thread up because they like the shopping, but they don't have anywhere to store it. They don't want to list it. They don't want to ship it, but they liked the shopping. Um, and so I think it's a good time too to maybe transition and learn a little bit about your guys's solution and what so if you guys want to talk a little bit about what um the reseller solution is kind of how it works out and how you came up with it sure. well as we were mentioning before we've spent the last seven years developing a whole host of systems and developing our employees to train them properly get them to the point where we we're running on clockwork our own personal four thousand item business and uh and so our, we're we're happy with that. We thought it was going well. It's it's helping, you know, providing for our needs. And we thought, well, we you know, what what if we were able to uh, uh, offer that same uh, benefit to other sellers who couldn't use a, uh, an Amazon FBA, for instance, because they sell thrifted one-off things, right? So we said, well, let's think about that and let's try to, to develop a service that would help other sellers do just that either scale and grow their business because they have space issues or they just don't want to ship uh, or and get more freedom. Because obviously if you don't have to ship, you're free to do other things like source more. Or so, take vacations. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Whatever you'd like to do. Right. So that was the impetus initially for the idea of like, wow, well, we, we developed some really great methods and, and everything. And let's offer that to other people that we, you know, that we could help. So it's been about two years, almost three now that we've been developing this. We just launched about a couple months ago and uh, we're, we're excited to be able to help other resellers that to, so they don't have to do what we did and invest a ton of money and space and employees. Cause let's face it, it's not for everyone, right? Some people don't want to be managers. Some people don't want to enter in a five-year lease commitment and everything that goes with that. So um, this is another, this is a new way to grow and scale your business that could work out really well for people, I think. Yeah, I think it's amazing because I had, I don't know a lot about Amazon. I'm tinkering and learning about it. I can't go there right now because <laughs> of everything. Um, but the interesting thing, then the appealing thing was the FBA where it's like, oh, I don't have to do like, I just shop and then I'm done. Like that's very appealing. I think a lot of people were looking at thread up like that as well for women's clothing. Um, and so it's amazing because you're able to grow your business. And so, I mean, essentially, right, that's what's happening. I would shop and then I would send my stuff to you. Um, you guys are storing it as things sell, you ship them and I'm done. That's exactly what fulfillment, storage and fulfillment is. That's what we do. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so many different slogans that pop into my head. It's like, well, it's it's making reselling fun again, you know, which is everyone loves to source and everyone loves to sell. It's what happens in the middle that's, you know, nobody sees, right? And uh, when, especially when it comes to storing and shipping, uh, what got me was some, I, and I, as I mentioned earlier, so many resellers say, ah, you know, I have a death pile. I have 400, 500 listings. I can't go sourcing. I, I have to list my death pile, et cetera. That, that kind of like makes me um, realize that don't let listing and all the mundane tasks get in the way of growing your business. Use your time to focus on the revenue side of your business, which is sourcing. And believe it or not, listing because you add value to your listing. So just outsource the mundane, which is the storage and the shipping. And you know, if you could take it wherever you want. Yeah. Or what you don't like. Cause I actually am like a weird reseller that I don't really love the 
<laughs> sourcing. I mean, I don't mind it, but the stress of sourcing when you're trying to hit certain numbers, it, you go to a thrift store and then you're like, I have to get this many. I don't, you know, I, it's very stressful to me, especially I realized this during COVID when I had no time. <laughs> Right. I was like, I need inventory. I went two months without inventory because things shut down. Um, and so I kind of like the Monday I've learned that I like taking pictures because I can just stand there, take pictures. My kids can interrupt. And I actually like the shipping part of it as well. Um, so nothing against you guys, but I think it's very important because you have to be able to scale. If you want to scale, you have to be able to outsource or find employees. It is way too much for one person to do. And so you have to figure out what works for you. Um, so Brittany at Shop Foxborough is saying, wait, what? I remember eBay that used to do that. You do that. Um, they do. Their information is down below. I was going to beta test for them because um, I think it's just such a great idea. But then COVID happened and I was remote teaching three children <laughs> and I couldn't add anything on. But I do want to have them on because I think it's a great idea. And I do know Dave and Lori personally. Um, I can't speak to the beta or to the process because I didn't do part of it, but I do um, know them personally. And I've seen their warehouse and know their work ethic as well. Um, so Catherine, let's talk shipping and um, how you get it all because it's just the two of you, right? Um, and you have 13, 1400 items. Um, let's talk kind of processes and improvements because I think as I scaled this year, that was something that I really had to learn. You have to, you can't, go, okay, where did I put that item when you have a thousand <laughs> items? It's going to take you forever. Um, and taking photos, you know, really be having the processes for everything has helped me make more spending less time. Um, so as you're doing, you know, this, how, what are some of your processes and how do you kind of get it all done as team of <laughs> I'll say one and a half, right? Because your husband helps as time allows. So, um, like, I remember talking to you one day, like when you were like, how many items do you think I can you asked your followers on Instagram, like, how many do you think you can do in an hour? You had an hour. Yeah. And I said 60. And then you're like, whoa, because I didn't realize you were like bagging all your stuff and doing all that right then. Yeah. So we don't really do that. Um, so when I'm photographing, I'm just photographing. That's it. I'm not even measuring. I could probably do those at the same time, but there's just, I'd have to come over to the desk to measure it. Anyways, so when I'm photographing, I'm photographing. Um, I usually do as many as I can, generally a minute or less per item. Um, I try to do a lot at once, at least 30, hopefully more like 50 at a time. And then usually when my kids go to bed at night, I just pump them out. Um, I, I do use List Perfectly like you do. I think you use it. Do you still use it? I don't. I have <laughs> used it, but as 2020 is on and I have less time, I just pay a lister. Yeah, so I, I use everything to Poshmark because I just think Poshmark's the easiest. It has the least amount of information. Um, and then like the next day I'll go and cross post all those items that I listed. So, uh, and then after I cross post, I will, I guess I forgot the measuring part. So I, I'll, I only measure like adult clothing, which I don't sell a ton of. I sell mostly shoes and then kids clothing I don't measure. Um, so yeah, I measure and then bag, and then I put stuff away, like after I cross post it. So I just get it done. I mean, it's not <laughs> a fancy system or anything. Something different works for everyone, though, too, right? Like there's so many different ways, and you also have to work within the space that you have, right? Like you are in that loft, and you can't. We moved this year. Um, and that also, I was talking with my husband this year that that also, it, our house, we moved our house, um, but I have a bigger studio now and it's allowed for my growth because I do have a space where I can take photos, I can do measurements, I can bag like all in one little area on the main floor so I can still hear the children. <laughs> where in our previous house, I was working in the basement in a tiny little space and it just wasn't an option, right? So you do have to work um, with the space that you have, which again is what's amazing about this is there's so many different ways that you can do it. Um, Brittany is asking, and I'm assuming this is for Dave and Lori, do you know anything about vintage? So this process, do you guys do the listing as well too? Or is it like we, like I would be a reseller, I buy something, I list it, and then I send it to you? Kind of how does that 
That's it. correct. Our clients are resellers. So they have their own accounts. They manage their accounts. Uh, ironically, we originally did want to offer listing services, but we found out in the process that it wasn't really feasible for the way we were going to do it. So we found a different way, an easier way. So the reseller does need to still uh, research their own items because they do know their items the best. Uh, they picked it, they bought it. So they do know those things better. So it does make a lot more sense for our process for our clients to just list their own items. Uh, in terms of vintage items, we the only vintage we know is electronics. And, and even that's probably a small portion of our inventory. Yeah. Somebody asked earlier if, wait, uh, didn't eBay have a store like that uh, we're offering? Um, we are we are fulfillment only. We're not consignment. So as Lori mentioned, the resellers that are currently on eBay mainly, uh, they could be on Poshmark as well. As long as whatever platform you're on generates the shipping label, we could we could accommodate them as well. Uh, we're not consignment. So the uh, our clients have full control over their accounts. Um, we just access their, um, on eBay, for example, we access their shipping uh, as well and also the scheduling of listings through uh, MUA, which which is a great feature and we're utilizing that for our So clients. MUA is just for people who aren't aware because I've only recently learned that. <laughs> That's the VA service for eBay, right? Like where you can log in as an employee. Right. Correct. It's a multi-user account access. There you go. I knew it had words or, you know, it was an acronym for something. I only, someone said it, I think it was probably Chris. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> um, but so if you're not familiar with eBay or if you don't have employees, eBay, which is uh, one of the nice things about eBay, eBay has um, employee access. So they aren't accessing all of your um, account information. And there's different levels of access that you can give the person as well. Um, and if you do, I mean, I'm sure Dave and Lori walk you through all of this. But for people who are watching, I use this for my lister as well. Um, I give her access to certain parts of the platform um, so that she can go in and make drafts as well. Um, so Brittany is saying, oh, I see, you know, that's super clever for resellers in small spaces or crowded cities. Um, right. Exactly. And a great way to help um, them scale as well or people who just like the sourcing. Um, when Dave and Lori told me this, I was like, oh. That is so cool. I wish it wasn't 2020 and I could help out <laughs> and, you know, see the process. Um, but, you know, there's maybe when things get better and the kids are back in school, eventually they have to go back eventually. Right. So let's talk a little bit about platforms. I know Dave and Lori, you are solely on eBay. Um, Catherine, you mentioned Poshmark and Kitizen. Are you on other places or are you? Mercari and then um, I sell one-offs on Facebook, not really Facebook Marketplace, but um, like different buy, sell, trade, like brand specific buy, sell trades that I'm in. I do. Have you, so what, where did you start? I mean, you mentioned Poshmark. Is that kind of your main? I thing? started on Mercari yeah, um, the earliest and then I, was looking, I sold a lot of kids stuff. So I was looking specifically for somewhere to sell kids items. And then I just like Googled it and there was kids in. And then at the time there was Tot Spot, I believe it was. But then Poshmark bought out Tot Spot or Tot, whatever it was. And that's when Poshmark added their kids market. And then, yeah. Anyways, I oh, went I with that. That's an interesting tidbit. So then just like two years ago, like I said, when we started Poshmark, I just started watching YouTube. I never watched YouTube before this. Um, Chris watches YouTube all the time and he told me there's resellers on there too. I didn't even know, like when I was, re when I was reselling, I didn't even know there was a community. I didn't know a lot of people did this. I was just doing it to do it. And so I think the first person we stumbled across was Jenna at Empty Hanger. So I was watching all her videos and then I was like, well, let me start Poshmark. She's selling these sweaters and shirts for like $35. So and the rest is history. <laughs> That's awesome. So, I mean, you do a lot of kid stuff. I actually don't really like kid stuff. But <laughs> I know. So. But I'll, I'll sell my kids my kid stuff just because I'm like, well, I can make something. Um, but why, I mean, what kind of draws you to the kid stuff and how does, you know, why do you like the kids? I think I'm just materialistic for like my own kids, what they wear and stuff. And so I realized that by me, what, what I dress my own kids in, it resells well. So like I can, 
Mm -hmm. I buy them like $40 sweaters, $50 hoodies, but I get almost all of that back when I sell their stuff. So then I realized, well, once upon a child, their stores sell these brands too sometimes. Um, I find them often and they sell them cheap. Uh, Goodwill, you can find shoes for like one to three dollars for kids. Once upon a child, more like five dollars. But so my job before this at the eye doctor, I was making 12, 13 bucks an hour. So nothing to brag about. Um, So my thought process is if I can at least make that per item, I'm happy, which a lot of my items only sell for like $10 $10 profit, but still it doesn't even take me an hour to list an item from sourcing it to all everything you have to do. So that was just my thought process um, from the beginning. And And kid stuff I feel like is easy, or at least the stuff that I've picked up and listed is is much easier to list. Yeah, when I was only doing kids, I could list 50 items a day, like nothing. So, but obviously they sell for less. So it's like a trade off. Um, but yeah, I, I shoot for like a $15 profit, but not everything is that. But if it's something simple, I'm not going to have to wash it. It's clean, front, back, tag photos. It takes like no time at all. So, so my one question is what kind of trickery do you do that your kids' clothes is still resellable? <laughs> uh, mostly like so yesterday we were doing family photos for like Christmas stuff and I just only let them wear their nice stuff for an hour or so and then take it off if we're eating they're not wearing any shirt and stuff like that so that makes sense because yeah. I am I, I mean we grew up thrifting and I've always thrifted you know just for our stuff and then you know to resell as well um and i'm in the mindset of i paid two dollars for this you don't know what brand it is if you want they were sliding down hills of mud today <laughs> like, so those are where they were their 99 cent goodwill the clothes <laughs> so doing yeah. i mean it was my son was in like a, the north face jacket but i got it at the thrift store and i'm like even if this is totally destroyed i can probably still sell it for 10 bucks <laughs> on yeah. ebay because it's a 3t the north face you cannot find yeah. um I mean, that's a valid point. And I hadn't ever thought about that with kids stuff. And I think you can probably, a lot of people leave it behind. A lot of resellers probably leave it behind and not as many people. Like when I'm shopping for my kids at the thrift stores, I don't care so much about brands. I mean, maybe a little bit. Like if I see the North Face jacket, I was like, oh yeah, like I'll buy that for my kid. But also he needs a winter jacket. I'll also buy the Target one because he needs a winter jacket, right? Like I'm not as particular as when I'm sourcing for myself. Um, <laughs> I haven't thought about that, and it is significantly easier to list. Um, so, ta- I'm not on Kittizens. Can you tell us a little bit about how, like, how it compares to? Well, you're not on eBay, so to Poshmark, I think most of my I am on eBay. So, I just started eBay mostly in 2020, um, and eBay has become my most profitable platform. So, I'm sad I didn't start it sooner, but I'm excited for 2021 to see what we can do there. Um, but yeah, Kittizen, I would always call it my favorite. I still kind of see it as my favorite, just. I like, it's very easy to bundle stuff there and like offer different shop discounts and things like that. It's very small, not like super duper small, but it's it's smaller compared to all the other ones. And so like not a ton of competition, um, it's kind of community based. So if you get to know other people in the app, then they get to like you, you know, their kids are the same size, they keep coming back for your stuff, yeah, so. Yeah, I like in this. I usually just bypass the kids stuff, but you have a lot of valid points, like the bundling too. Because when I shop for my kids, I definitely am bundling. And most of the time, it, you know, I go to someone's closet that it's usually like getting rid of their kids stuff. So I'm like, cool, you have the jacket in the size, you have all the pants, you have all the shirts. Um, and then, yeah, if someone, if I like that person, I've definitely gone back to their closet when I need the next size up, thinking, I'm thinking that I'm buying from the person and like their kids, you know, a year older than me. Um, but that would work out too. So smart business strategy. Um, I love, I mean, this is what I love about the community and reselling is that there's so many different ways to do this and there's so much, it's not great for our environment, but there's so much stuff out there. <laughs> and you get paid the same day that you ship your item. You don't have to wait for anybody to rate you or anything like that. Wow. That's nice too. And it cashes straight out to PayPal. So you don't have to wait for like a bank deposit. So if you guys are watching this and you sell a lot of kids stuff, it sounds like Kinsey's is the place to go. Um, Dave and Lori, you guys are strictly eBay. Have you try, ever tried other platforms What or what drew you to eBay? Um, I just, you know, eBay has 180 million buyers and what we sell is 
great for eBay because we, you know, older used electronics, people are looking for replacements. Um, I just, once again, it goes back to knowing your numbers and projecting where you want to eventually be. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I would always be on eBay and I don't see another platform competing yet, nor, nor we, do we find the need to have to cross list at this time. And, you know, Sarah, like, for example, like we, we spoke, you were Poshmark and then you went over to eBay and we, I watched, uh, last week, you, you talked about your numbers. Um, and, and, and same with, uh, you know, everyone else that eventually moves over to eBay. Um, there is a, a more, sh a stronger, um, consistent, uh, market. So that's, yeah, we're, we're all eBay and don't but, see. But to answer your question, yeah. we did do Amazon very briefly uh, right. in the beginning. He had started to just books and new things, but we weren't big yeah. enough at Amazon to make it profitable. And they made some changes with their refund policies and, and we, it just was a different experience. Yeah. And, and the whole Amazon FBA thing, as you mentioned, is so appealing. You know, you get the items, you just list them and then send them off when they sell, you get paid. And that's, that's why we created eBliss. It's, it's for one-off uh, items, thrifters that want to do the same thing with their items and not have to worry about the storage and the shipping. Yeah, the, who want the Amazon experience, but don't necessarily have the Amazon inventory. Exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, yeah, that's cool. And so I think, I mean, I want to lead into eBay because I thought you were on eBay, Catherine. I thought I saw something that that was kind of coming up. Um, and it's interesting for those who are followed my journey this year. Um, I definitely started as a posh person, but knowing I was getting to a point on posh where like it was capped. No matter what I was doing, I couldn't get any bigger. Um, and in talking with people in the community, most, not all, some people make it on other places, but most full-time resellers or, you know, resellers who go to the next level are in eBay in some capacity. Um, and so I kind of started on the eBay and now at the end of 2020, I am definitely much more of an eBay seller than Poshmark seller. Um, but it's very intimidating for sure. If you watch some of my earlier videos, um, especially coming from Poshmark, it's very easy to list. It's very, um, it can be time consuming to do all of the things that you have to do but it's just pushing a button, right? Like I just have to share my closet where eBay can be very overwhelming. There's so many tools you have to learn shipping. You have to, um, it can become very overwhelming. So I want to talk, um, you know, Catherine, you were in Kizens and then you said you like Poshmark as well. Cause it's so easy. How has you kind of been moving over to eBay? How has that transition um, worked? <laughs> well, I love eBay cause you get the most sales there. Um, I was talking to Chris about this the other day. I like in 2021, I kind of want to, I still like cross posting, but I kind of was thinking maybe list to eBay, leave it there maybe for seven days. If it doesn't sell after seven days, then cross post. Um, just cause you know, when you're constantly ending items, you only get that. Well, my store is the thousand item store. So I'm paying 10 cents over anything over and I'm already going over cause I'm already at 1200 and mm -hmm. So just thinking about doing that, that way I'm not constantly ending stuff that's sold elsewhere. Um, and if it doesn't sell for seven days, then cross post. But yeah. Um, that's kind of where I'm like moving into the new year. I posted on Poshmark and my lister, I, I, for those who don't know, I have a lister. I want full transparency. I do not do all of this on my own with three kids at home, but I have a lister and she lists on eBay and then on Poshmark at the same time. But I was looking at some of my numbers towards the end of this year um, and I'm kind of with you. I'm making more sales on eBay and I pay her to list it on Poshmark. Um, so I've kind of transitioned to, I leave it on eBay for a month and then I'll have her list it to Poshmark too because things were selling. You know, I looked at my numbers. I did a video a couple of weeks ago um, looking at the numbers, comparing the two, but Poshmark, eBay was selling higher and selling more. Yeah. So like, why am I? But it's scary to be an only eBay seller. <laughs> I definitely think if I just did eBay and didn't do anything else, I think I would make the same amount that I'm making split between the four. Yeah. But others are all so much easier than eBay. I mean, easy eBay is not that hard to me. Like I already understood shipping before I started it. So I think the shipping is what holds people back, but kid is in, you kind of have to ship on your own. You don't get that. I mean, they do have their labels in the app, but you still have to kind of purchase them and understand that you need to do it by weight. Whereas Poshmark people, you know, it's five pounds, almost nothing's over five pounds. So I don't know. It's just easy compared to like eBay where you're doing 
dimensions, weight, everything like that. Yeah, for sure. So we have a couple of people, uh, Michelle in the audience is saying she loves selling on eBay, have to get more consistent with it. Um, and that's something too that I noticed with on eBay too. You definitely have to be consistent. Um, and I think that's where, and I'm going to talk to you about this, Dave. Don't think I forgot about you saying you got suspended. <laughs> I'll um, talk about that. That was um, seven years ago. <laughs> I'm suspended. <laughs> Yeah. It's not too soon, right? Like I can bring it up or is it still a little tender? Um, but I think on eBay, and that's kind of why I put it off for so long because I think Poshmark was a good place. For me personally, everyone has to do what works best for them. But Poshmark was a good place to learn because if you cancel an order, they don't ding your account. If you ship late, um, as you're kind of learning all of those things. So once I spent you know a year learning Poshmark, I was like, okay, I feel like I'm not gonna make as many mistakes on eBay because you have to be consistent. They want you to ship out in the one day and have free returns and you know all of these different things that if you're new and you kind of miss a couple of them, um, it can suspend your account. Um, so Dave, let's talk a little bit about that. How does, you don't have to get into your story necessarily, oh. but I mean, eBay can be scary. It can't suspend your account. Like what types of things do that and how do you get out of it? I think it's just uh, being non-responsive to inquiry returns and also uh, you know, years ago it was different. Uh, if you had a neutral feedback, that, that would count against you. So it was like a ratio. If you had a neutral or a negative feedback and, and the, the percentage wasn't in line of their performance metrics, approved met performance metrics, you, you could be sus suspended by suspended. I meant you couldn't list, you couldn't list for like a week or two weeks. So it would just be a hiccup in the whole uh, process to get your business going. So that's what I ran into. Uh, it was all, but that they changed that quickly. Right. And, also not yeah. kn knowing what you can't list because there's a lot of things you're not allowed to list on eBay. So mm. you just have to be careful in that. And then there's the whole Vero uh, situation with, you know, you could get knocked for that too. So it's Vero for those who aren't. Oh, the verified uh, verified rights owners program. I believe it. That's what. That's to be honest, one of the reasons why we stay away from pocketbooks because we've gotten burned with Vero for certain yeah. brands because somebody could say it's a knockoff or whatever, and if we're not really knowledgeable, then then we don't know. Yeah, and and also with eBay, as you mentioned, the shipping is. A, is intimidating for those that are used to Poshmark and other platforms where the label is created for you. Uh, so many don't venture into eBay for that reason alone. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it does take a little bit of, there is a learning curve to it, uh, but we, that's why we formed eBliss. We just don't let the, out, the things out there intimidate you from growing your business. Just go for it. Well, and especially with this stuff that you guys sell, that was the one thing I hated about selling my brother-in-law stuff. It would sell, and then I'd be like, um, <laughs> "How do I ship this? <laughs> like, I can't just put it in a poly mailer, like you know, my women's clothing." Um, yeah. He would actually like because he's been doing it like I don't know, twenty years or something ridiculous. He has all these different size boxes and wraps, and you know, probably similar to well, I have seen your store similar to you guys. You have all of that. Stuff. So I could definitely see, you know, if you had one offs like that too, um, where it would be interesting. The other thing I was going to say too, I know people on eBay, um, Velcro, you cannot use the word Velcro. Yep. <laughs> so there's, yeah, there's a list. I know that's one, um, but there's a list on eBay as well of words that you can't use. Um, and then stock photos. All of the platforms say you cannot use stock photos. Um, not all of the platforms are, and even eBay, I've heard sometimes you get in trouble and sometimes you don't for using stock photos. Um, but I do personally know two people on eBay that have had their um, store shut down for like months because they used a stock photo. Um, so that can be kind of intimidating and scary too for resellers. Yeah, yeah the one thing that you asked, how do you uh, fight it or how do you work, deal with it? Our recommendation is to fight every single one if possible, unless you know you just completely messed up. Um, even so, just to, to call them up and say, you know, plead with them, explain the situation. They're usually pretty, I mean, we have found that they will, they'll take it off, they'll put us back on. And I mean, this hasn't happened for a while, but um, when it did happen, they, they, were, they, were, they worked with us. And let me, let me put it that way. So, but you, they wouldn't do that if you didn't call and ask. So, and you also, they have a program now too. Um, my goal in 2021 is to learn eBay better because there's so many great tools um, and so much 
information that I don't even know that I don't know. Um, but I did learn, well, I've known this, but if you're a top rated seller too, you have a lot of those securities um, that they back you. So like doing, I don't know all the metrics you guys might know better than me, but having certain metrics to become a top rated seller. And then if something does happen, they do um, back you. I've never, I've heard, I haven't been down that path, um, but I have heard that. Correct. Um, let me check in with the chat. I want to start on eBay. Oh, she was saying that um, posture was her number one. I switched to eBay only. So great to focus. It's kind of funny because if you guys would watch videos from a year ago, it would have been all Poshmark talk. Um, <laughs> it's kind of the fun thing of watching resellers as they evolve and learn. Um, I sell vintage and love Etsy, although eBay seemed to be doing okay this weekend. Um, I've heard quite a few resellers that do vintage really like eBay because it's an international, well, Etsy is too, but it's an international market. And so you get a lot of um, sales, vintage, vintage women's is what I know, sales um, because it is a bigger platform. eBay is my number one. Lovely Lotus is a vintage seller, so she's going to back what I just said because she does sell women's vintage. Um, she is all... Uh, number one for eBay as well. Poshmark is the gateway drug <laughs> of reselling. <laughs> Never heard that one before. <laughs> she may be right. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's funny because it's so easy to get into. And then you're like, oh, cool. I can do all of these things. I love wow. it. Let me just check in and see. Oh, Andy's Closet is here. She has a great uh, YouTube channel. If you guys want to head on over and subscribe to that. Um, I called and went for 10 to 100 listings allowed. I went for 10 to 100 listings allowed to list. I'm not sure. Oh, wait. You mean like when she first started, like you only get a little bit of listings until you like prove yourself or something? Yes, yes. I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. So there was a question before that. <laughs> she was answering. Thank you for helping. Yes. So when you first start, you do have a limit and then they hold your funds a little bit too, which is the nice thing. And I heard... So some, you know, people will say, hey, there's so many restrictions on eBay and it makes it hard as a seller. I take it from the brighter side that everything that eBay is doing is making the buyer have a better experience so that they want to come back to us. Right. Um, and so while it's kind of hard to jump through all of these hoops, I do believe that for the most part, eBay does it to make the buyer have a good experience. They're competing with Amazon. Right. Like you have free shipping, you have free returns, you have, you know, that's their big um, one. That's one thing I don't do yet is accept returns on eBay. So I know that I would probably help me. But again, since I'm selling all over, I know my item's going to sell somewhere and I just don't feel the need to accept them at this time. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, it's, it's annoying, especially if you're coming from, you know, one of the other platforms that doesn't accept the returns. Um, I've kind of just banked it into my business, like 5% of my things. But the nice thing too is most of mine, all 99, I think maybe one, but most of them are returned for fit because I sell women's clothes. But then it has, it just gets relisted and eBay likes that it's already sold once. So it usually sells again before I even put it away, <laughs> which is nice because it's less time, right? I don't have to go put it away to um, find other things. So we are wrapping up. Um, if anyone has, we do have, you know, having Lori and Dave has been amazing. If you guys have any like specific eBay questions or questions about eBliss, um, we have a couple of minutes if you guys do want to ask any of those as well. Catherine, you have lots of knowledge on all the different platforms and an amazing YouTube channel as well. So guys, make sure to head on over there. Um, I did, I wrote down questions, but I think we got to all of them. Um, we did. Okay. So let me check in with the chat. If you guys have any, oh, we do have a question. Drunken Yoda. Um, I think this might be a scam. <laughs> what do you say? Best way to ship from home. No vehicles, single father with disabled kids would be a great topic. I'm studying though. Best way to ship from home. Um, well, you can send your items to eat list. <laughs> You don't have to ship. Um, I, I mean, I ship from home. So yeah, I ship from home too, and it's on my agenda to do a video on how I ship. Um, I have it set to where I can ship in under two minutes or less, um, because I I hated shipping um, for a while, and it was because I didn't have a, a process, and I was like, oh my god, is where is this and where is that? And then my kid would come in, and then I shipped the wrong item, um, and so getting a process 
has really helped me. Um, and shelves, <laughs> it sounds so odd, but I had my husband this over a Christmas break, um, set up some shelves. So like all of my boxes were where they needed to be. Um, and all of that resale secrets to say restrictions are on how many listings you're allowed, get a store and call to ask for more. If you get a limit, um, lots of great content here. <laughs> Ashley Gibson. Um, Ashley, if you guys don't follow her, she has a great YouTube channel too. She'll be on next month on one of these uh, chats. Oh my God, Poshmark is totally the gateway to so much more. That's so funny. Um, Liz, she's been on before. We love Liz here. I am starting to see a better prices on eBay despite the perceived competition. Um, this is interesting because I did a video a couple weeks ago on my prices on Poshmark versus eBay. And most of my items in the community are said to sell better on Posh. Um, and I've been told I'm a Poshmarky seller by the type of stuff that I sell. And that was not the case. Um, it was actually eBay. Okay, I'm just going through. If you guys have any last notes, well, this one definitely. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Oh my God, I ship at 4 a.m. No distractions. No, I like you just. I wake up at nine at least every day. <laughs> I like my sleep. I had Nicole say it on the other day, and she totally called me out. I'd love her for it, but um, she gets up at I think it was five every day for like an accountability call and to get work done. And I was like, well, I like my sleep. <laughs> I don't like this that much. I will just lose out. Um, oh, thank you. We have a, I don't know what these are called. I'm still new to YouTube. <laughs> you could pay like a super chat or something. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, I think we're good with questions. Yep, we're good. Okay, so thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, I'm excited. Dave and Lori, um, I met them because, like I said, they're in the Denver metro area and they do eBay meetups. Um, and the eBay meetups are like educational eBay meetups, <laughs> which uh, they they differ from the Posh and Sips. I like the Posh and Sips because it's networking and talking to people, but I learned so much. The couple that I got to go to and then COVID happened. Um, but I'm excited for hopefully I can make them one this week or this next week, two weeks, no, January 11th. Um, yeah. It's talking about eBay yeah. tools and stuff as well. So, um, Catherine, if you want to do that meetup, it'll be, um, a VP is coming to talk about the reseller tools on eBay, um, and all of that stuff. So thank you guys it's truly, uh, Dave and Lori, thank you guys for coming on and telling us about all the things that you are doing for the community. I've learned a lot, um, on those eBay meetups and I think your idea is, absolutely amazing um and then also catherine as well ginger marvin i love seeing different aspects um of this and how you've been able to do this with little kids at home making it your full-time income um a lot of my followers are in that same boat um because that's kind of what i am as well with the kids at home so thank you guys both so much if you have any last minute pieces of advice or anything if you're having a sale or anything you want to kind of throw out before we end the call I, like I said earlier, make reselling fun again. Just enjoy what you do. Keep on doing it. Do what you like and, and outsource or get help on the stuff that you don't like, whether it's listing, shipping, whatever. But yeah. have fun. In 2021, it's a, it'll be a great year. Reselling is a great business to get into. So stick with it and grow your business if you want to and just have fun. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Catherine? I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. You had lots of great insight into this. I really appreciate you coming. Thank you everyone who joined in the chat as well. This is every single Monday, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard. Um, so if you do want to come on the video and join me talking, it kind of just goes in whatever direction uh, that we have that I have the guests on. We just kind of talk and chat. Reselling can be very isolating. So this is kind of my connection with other resellers. Um, step away from the kids for an hour a week. <laughs> and talk to other normal human, human beings that do what I do. Um, so I'd love to have you guys on. Just send me a DM on Instagram if you would like to come on and make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notifications so you get notified of my new content. I do a weekly chat and then I'm trying to do at least one video a week as the children allow. Um, my other videos are focused on data analytics and how to look at your numbers to be able to make, make the money that you want to make. 
hit that thumbs up. If you do have questions and you're watching this in the recording, leave those comments down below. Um, like I said, Eveless and Ginger Marvin's Instagram links are in the description and you can access um, their other links and contact them if you have other questions or want to chat with them. So I hope everyone has a great night. And again, thanks for guys for coming on. Great. Thank, thank you. you so much. Good night.